Oh boy. Oh boy, it's been- Oh boy, it's been a little while! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, everybody calm down for just a moment. I need to go ahead and get my bearings as apparently, like, how many employees is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I need to go ahead and take care of, uh, we have an animal, a zebra that we can actually trade. Uh, apparently, I have exhibits that need water. Uh, we apparently are employing basically a small city. I can see this. I, I, I see what's going on here. We basically have a million and a half people. What the heck? <laughs> And uh, welcome back to Let's Build a Zoo, everyone, where why do I have so many armadillos? Why do I have so many lemurs? What have I done? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so rich! When did we get nine million dollars? Wow. Okay, well, apparently I must be doing something right if we have that much money. Uh, and then, oh my gosh, there's so much happening. Ah! Okay, save the rainforest too. Amazon is ama off. Oh, it's joy. Okay. Can you help us by giving 50% of all money collected by your mascots for the next month? We'll use the money to buy more land in the Amazon. The more we own, the less that gets destroyed. Yes, I will be very happy to go ahead and do that. I think we are. <gasps> oh, apparently I've also discovered how to go ahead and get the Rapalicia, which is one of my favorite plants. Um, and holy days. All right. Uh, like things are just moving. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to our ever expanding and ever chaotic zoo here in the Let's Build a Zoo. Where apparently we still have more than half the zoo to build. Holy canoodles. Well that's a good thing because we still have a ton of animals to go ahead and collect and unlock. We have a farm to prepare. We have horses of courses to go ahead and figure out all of the variants and crossbreeds for. Oh and by the way, yeah, we have dinosaurs and uh, we kind of have like a brand new set of DLC that totally focuses on being able to go ahead and actually, let's see if I can find it, uh, actually like have aquatic creatures. Let me see if I can find the right one. Okay, 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 okay. That's the Tokyo Zoo. Uh, and then we have the Berlin Zoo. Then we have the Greenland Zoo. <gasps> the Greenland Zoo is going to give us sheepies if we give them our zebra? Okay, that might have to happen. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> There's an alpaca that we could go ahead and rescue from the rescue center. All right, all right. See, this is this is when I might need just a moment. Uh, and then we can transport. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We can pick from the zoos we currently own to go ahead and transport the animals. There's our Zudesia Zoo. And now we also have land for sale for the aquarium world. Yes, a celebration of the world's rivers and oceans. There it is, friends. The newest in the DLC for Let's Build a Zoo, which is going to let us make, well, gorilla mermaids, to be honest. Uh, or we could go ahead and we could possibly go and create some chicken whales or maybe some actual tiger and shark, tiger sharks. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. I'm really looking forward to this. And also, I completely, like, forgot that you could apparently, like, transfer your animals between the zoos, and that's how we actually get to go ahead and have the dinosaurs have mixes with the normal animals, I think. Um, yeah, kind of totally missed out on that. Also, Kansas, which apparently limited task and freedom to build all types of buildings without morality limits. Wow, Kansas. Wow. All right. Well, let's do this. We're going to go ahead and buy Aquarium World. Aquarium, you own this plot of land and the only thing left to do is get started building your zoo. All right, default rules with the exclusive aquarium DLC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The oceans need saving. Let's build an aquarium and see if we can help. All right, so change locations. You will fly to the zoo at the end of the day after the game has saved. Awesome. So we have one more day to go ahead and take care of things back over in the Zudesia Zoo. That's fantastic. Was there a way where I can actually transport? So I would like to go ahead and is that just transporting myself and not the animals? Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out how we're going to make all of this happen, but I have been told that I indeed can mix the aquatic animals with the animals we currently have. How? Who knows? It's science and the chaos of science. And look at our giraffes. That's right. We were working on trying to get all of the different giraffe variations so that we could go ahead and we could get ourselves some really, really, really awesome uh, like hybrid crossbreeds on these guys as well. Oh dear. Apparently, oh, oh dear. Apparently there's a lot of, oh, there is a lot of poop. Okay. Huh? <laughs> wow. All right. Yay! 
Okay, well, I'm happy to be back in the chaos, even if it does seem to contain a bazillion and a half pandas. And even if there clearly is quite a bit that we need to go ahead and do to help all of our poor animals be a little bit happier and a little bit healthier. Let's actually come over. Oh, there's the crisper slicer of where we mix the jeans together. So it looks like this area, this enclosure right here, where we have Mischief, Checkers, and Bandit, who are all blonde horses, needs a little bit more water for them to drink. Um, so I'll take care of that to try to just, you know, get our get our bearings again. Uh, oh, look at the cute little water basins! That's right, there's gonna be new stuff that we can actually go ahead and study and research. Uh, let's see, all right, all right, all right. There we go, there we go. Yay! All right, so that should be good for their water. Got it, got it. Uh, and I think we were definitely trying to get a whole bunch of the different horse variations. So, yes, we were! That's right, so that we could start making some crisper, like, crossbreed horses with basically any of the other animals in our zoo. Wow, returning to all of this is quite the rush. Hopefully, I, I, I won't make it all explode. As we literally just apparently incinerated a dead tortoise. <laughs> That was really funny. <laughs> oh dear. All right, well, speaking of deer, uh, I guess we should go ahead and we should snag those new animals before they go ahead and slip out of our grasp. So there is an alpaca that we can go ahead and rescue. So I think we actually have a area for, we do have an area for alpaca back here. So let's add in another alpaca over here. And look at Sheena, our alpaca! Hello, my dear! I wish I could change your name, but they haven't added that into the game just yet, unfortunately. And we're gonna have a new variant of alpaca come and join us in just a little bit here. Uh, and then once we get five variants, we'll be able to actually start crossbreeding any of the other creatures we've unlocked with our alpaca as well, because that's how it works. We'll check out this paca wolves, which is definitely overpopulated. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no, what's all this trash doing here? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. But we'll check out this pack of wolves while I go ahead and uh, maybe explain what we're doing here to those of you who are new to this extremely chaotic zoo. Uh, focusing on one exhibit to just stare at is probably going to be the best course of action. Also, I I think we should probably make sure that we have enough variants of that zebra before we trade it for those sheep. And I probably need to know where I'm going to take the sheep before I just have them in my arms and run around in circles. Uh, so <laughs> here in Let's Build a Zoo, we have been tasked with building up a fantastic zoo that we had many, many dozens of adventures with. You can see the previous playlist to see how we managed to get our morality up very high because we were not participating in the black market, we weren't selling our animals, and we were not feeding our animals to other animals or people to animals. Boy, there's a lot of spooky options with the uh, dubious, maybe bad morality route you could go. But no, no, instead, we have been very busy donating to all sorts of uh, projects, uh, trying a little bit to reduce our pollution by adding in a bazillion and a half trees. And we have been getting our morality up from our animals by doing our best to go ahead. Uh, how early babies are taken from their mother? I have not been taking the babies from their mother. I am not evil. I swear. Normally we leave that for quite a long time. I don't know how I did that. Whoops. <laughs> okay, I'll have to fix that. Um, and we are not, we're, we're evil in our sustainable water sources. Well, you know, I'll figure it out eventually. But in the course of taking care of this entire zoo, we have uh, quite the fantastic ace up our sleeves because we have got somewhere, somewhere, there we go. We have got several of these! Da, 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 da! These, my friends, this is the crisper. And with the crisper, we can go ahead and crisscross all of those animal genes to create some very curious crossbreeds. Like this little crossbreed who is currently floating around one hour and 25 minutes left <gasps> on an ostrich capybara. That was inspired. That was utterly inspired. I had no idea that that's actually what we went ahead and we, we were like doing but apparently it was. We also have some little, are these are gonna be my giraffes. Oh, we're cloning some of the rare giraffes in these crispers over here. And then over here, oh, we're making, oh my gosh, 
Oh, this is so cool. Okay, okay. So we're actually doing a genome pair of a peacock and a panda. Come on, that is going to look amazing. Okay, actually, now that I'm starting to see the panda body and the peacock head, I might need to retract that statement with some concern. But still, oh, who's this? You guys, they're panda turtles. Because of course they are. <laughs> And a, a turtle peacock, because why not? Oh my goodness gracious. And our employees are leveling up and I'm remembering why this is one of those things where I would focus on one thing at a time and laser in on it and refuse to budge. Uh, also, I wonder, I think that there's actually a list. Here's our journal. Hmm, splicing and dicing, yes, yes. We need to go ahead and figure out how to build our aquarium in a little bit here. And we're still working on mapping genomes and a few other quests. I'm trying to remember, do I need to check on like an empty space in one of the crispers to go ahead and see? Yes, here we go. So we have managed to get our hands on quite a bit of the DNA from a few animals here. Everything from bunnies to walrus, geese, capybara, ducks, snakes, badgers, hyena, porcupine, bears, mongoose, wait, that's not a mongoose, what the heck, Siri? The meerkat. <laughs> a horse, of course, armadillos, donkeys, cows, tapirs, ostriches, turtles, chickens, camels, penguins, some lovely antelope. We also have panthers, we've got pigs, we've got seals, we've got wolves. I haven't unlocked all of the wolves yet, but I know that that's going to be quite a popular thing. <gasps> what should we crossbreed the wolves with when it comes to the aquatic animals? Oh, that'll be so exciting. We also have lemurs, alpaca, Komodo dragons, orangutans, we have polar bears, peafowl, crocodiles, war wild boars, platypi, uh, we have monkeys, flamingos, gorillas, red pandas, zebras, elephants, skunks, rhinos, panda, giraffe, and the panda giraffe sounds like it'd be really cool actually. We're still working on getting enough of the giraffe genes to be able to snag ourselves uh, crossing their, their genetics with other animals though. You have to get at least three, or excuse me, you have to get at least five variants of each animal type so discover 50% of all the genomes of that type before you can actually do anything in the CRISPR. Then we have hippotami, we've got goats, we've got minks, ah, and we're out of here. <laughs> Wow, and 1,800 people wanted to come but they couldn't get on our bus. That's amazing. And now the bus is gone. Well, okay. <laughs> So we're going to leave behind that chaotic zoo and we're going to pop into this new one here. At last, I have found someone to help make my dreams of sharing the wonders of the oceans and rivers a reality. Let's get going and build the most sp uh, spectacular aquarium in the world has ever seen. I want people to discover everything that lives under the waves, just as I have for the last eight, uh, 65 years. Excellent, sir. Uh, okay, this will be me and a name for our zoo. Uh, let's see. So we have Zoodacia usually. Hmm. Maybe Sulani, after like the waterways of the beautiful beaches in our Sims 4 world, so why not? We'll name it Sulani. <gasps> and look at our aquarium! Oh my gosh, it's so small because we have to start all over again for like a new zoo. But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll be able to keep some of our like things we can research and we'll be able to keep some of our genomes. I'm not sure how you can blend it, but I've been told I can make chicken sharks. So like that's from the official discord. So I'm side eyeing it and we'll find out. The Deep Sea Daily Ocean Journal New Aquarium Constructed. Jackie Kortsu has been exploring the ocean with his family for the last 65 years. He has seen wonders and sights few ever get to experience, but he has also seen a decline in the sustainability of our ocean ecosystem. Recently, he partnered with the people behind Dinosaur Island to plan a whole new kind of attraction. Aquarium World will bring together some of the Animal Kingdom's most incredible sea and river creatures for visitors to marvel at. Jackie had this to say, while I love to see fish where they belong, building this new aquarium gives us a chance to preserve some of these animals in a safe and clean environment, free of industrial fishing and widespread pollution. That's excellent, Jackie. Okay, so now I just need to go ahead and get a fish. <laughs> Are you ready to go on an aquarium odyssey? We need to get creatures from the sea to populate our aquarium. Explore and see if you can find a way to populate our first animal exhibit. <gasps> Whoa, wait, what? This is totally different. Oh my gosh, okay. How to get fish. 
to get fish for your aquarium from the boats around found on the world map. Oh my gosh. The mega ship is a trawler that acquires fish for you with its unethical fishing practices. While the sea warrior saves fish from the world's destructive fishing fleets and oil platforms for you to nurture and protect from harm. <gasps> so you have to decide, do you want to get your fish from good or evil like sources? And boy, having worked in the, uh, like just as a little clerk when I was itty bitty teenager at a pet store, holy moly if you care about like fish do your research about where they're coming from for sure uh and that being said where you choose to source your fish will affect our morality score so we're gonna have some very interesting like things we're going to need to think about new aquatic animal the fishing boats have discovered a new animal from the ocean today cool so that's how they actually discover it and then it seems like we come over to the world map and if we want to go with the mega ship, the mega ship is an international trawler. It is amazing at catching fish and ignoring international boundaries. This factory of the sea collects nature's never ending bounty, however. Uh, bounty, however, sometimes it catches things that governments and conspiracy theorists have deemed as protected. In this case, the ones that don't die should be thrown back in the sea. But the Mega Corp ship has, or the Mega Ship Corp has decided to sell all living specimens to you. Oh, and it has a basic boat, and we can apparently upgrade it if we wished. Huh. Upgrade your boat's radar from the research grid to discover new varieties of fish. Good to know! Uh, also, it's $23 to get a male and female clownfish from them. And it's also $23 from the Sea Warrior! The Sea Warrior is a ship full of dedicated ocean protectors. They follow large fishing vessel, large this, fishing. Oh my gosh, this is this is so hilarious. Oh, okay, that's like Sally sells seashells by the seashore, right? They follow large fishing vessels and regularly dive into the waters to inspect their nets to free any trapped animals. Regularly freeing dolphins, turtles, and whales is a rewarding job. However, sometimes these animals are injured and cannot survive on their own. These animals are nursed back to health, then sponsored by zoos such as yours, where they can give them a long and healthy life outside of their natural habitat. That's so nice! And it's a little basic boat for them too! Okay, I wonder if, like, the 5,000... I don't know what that comes from, but let's go ahead... Oh! Oh, that's our money! Oh! Can I... <laughs> I wish I could send some of the money from my other zoo over. All right, let's get them into the saltwater aquarium. Come on, little friends. All right, uh, what else can I go ahead and snag? Let's see, shops. So build a shop to start earning revenue from my visitors. Well, you know, not any visitors just yet either. What else can I put down? Gift stand. Uh, research hub. Okay, we definitely need a research hub if we're gonna like make things happen. I wonder, yay! So we have... Good, good, good. We have now gotten the fish. Um, wait, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, a, like, a fish person to come and take care of things. Oh my gosh, they're little divers this time for your zookeepers. That is so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to figure out. Maybe we'll actually put it kind of in the center, like a little lighthouse or something. And now... Politeness, work ethic, energy, and job satisfaction, as well as level, happens to all affect how our different employees will be able to go ahead and take care of our new fishies as fish keepers. And I think that, like, job satisfaction and politeness, 30 more dollars is a lot right now, but let's just go ahead and let's just start, like, paying people so far above market rate that hopefully they'll be satisfied enough to take good care of our fishies. And then we'll also put down a research hub that is going to get uh, a little researcher in here. And then maybe I'll have like a little area for decorations, maybe a bathroom over here. And then politeness, work ethic, energy, job satisfaction. Mm. Okay, researchers are a lot more. Uh, and work ethic? Work ethic combined with energy and experience helps to find employees' speed and work quality. Huh. Well, her work ethic doesn't really budge, so I'll give her a little above market rate, but I'm not impressed, so we might have to hire someone new. But when you are known just for firing people as soon as you hire them right now, can I... Nope, I was trying to see if I could escape having to hire her, but I guess she's just the first one up. All right, so now we have the clownfish! 
right now we are feeding them uh, the ocean flakes, but apparently we can give them zooplankton, algae, and shrimp aww, to get them better nutrition. So that is going to change what it costs, but like they cost like 40 cents a day right now. So <laughs> we can probably afford to give them some better things. Uh, let's see, it looks like they really like shrimp. So let's try giving them more shrimp. And then we're gonna give them, uh, we don't wanna overfeed them or else they can get unhealthy. And then do they need algae? Okay, that doesn't really budge their nutrition. Zooplankton doesn't really budge their nutrition. More shrimp? Mm, that doesn't really move it either. I think that maybe algae could fill in the rest over here. Let's shrink that all down. Eh. And then a little bit of zooplankton to fill in the gaps. Maybe? Oh, boop, 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 boop. This may do it. This may do it. Except, you know, pulling it down so they're not supremely overfed. Might as well make sure that we're just like, yay, there they go. Aw, so now we have 10% shrimp, 27% uh, algae, a little bit of zooplankton, some ocean flakes mixed together. And for a whole dollar 76 a day, our two wonderful clownfish can have the absolute best food that we can offer them. Oh, uh, oh wait, oh, um, okay, wait, 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 okay, okay, okay. Let's buy their food. There we go, that's good. And then they also need enrichment. So let's see what kind of balls. <laughs> I thought I was gonna give them a little sea anemone because they're clownfish, but I can totally get behind giving these little ones some balls to play with. That's so cute. What can I decorate their enclosure with? Oh, oh, Dave Rainey, popularity contest. I don't care much for the sea, but you, if you can get 100 people to visit your park, it might mean less people paying attention to the real ocean. If you can prove the viability of the park, I will look into developing a bus route so more people can find their way to your aquarium easily. Thanks, Dave Rainey. Okay. Uh, I wish you cared about the zoo, but I mean, I'll take what I can get, I suppose. So we can give them mossy rocks and long grass. Look at them play with the little ball. That's so cute. Um... I think I'll go ahead and give them like a little rock tower for now because it's like the closest I can get to being able to give them a sea anemone at the moment. But as you guys can see, there are a lot of new decorations that we'll be able to put into their exhibit. So I'm really looking, oh, wow, there's a lot of decorations. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be able to take good care of them. Don't worry, guys. Let's see, anything else for enrichment? Not really. I guess the ocean itself, like the salt water itself kind of is the enrichment. Um, and then how are animals? <gasps> Big boy, what a cute name. In winter, I thought I got a female. Tilting my head. What? Huh. I mean, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Born male, all clownfish have the ability to change into a female if there are no females around. Life expectancy is about 30 days for us. Uh, and they go into reefs. The separation space per animal, one territory space. Oh my gosh, you guys. So we have to wait to see, is big boy or winter going to go ahead and transform into the female that we need to begin propagating some adorable little uh, sea, like, pups? I was trying to figure out, like, polyps, pups, a uh, fry, that's what they're called. I was trying to remember what baby fish are called and the word is fry. That's what I was looking for. All right, we've got wooden planks, we've got wood decking, we've got sand. Okay, okay. And then let's go ahead and see, what do we have for research tree? That is the question. Hmm. <gasps> Look at all of those ocean plants. They're so pretty, wow. And then we have enrichment pack. We have more things we can put on the floor. Reef enclosure. Different enclosures are more suited for certain animals. Okay, we definitely should go ahead and spend one of our research points to unlock that. And now we can have the tropical juice shop and we can get a bin so people are not just gonna throw all of their, their food everywhere. Let's research the plant pack as well. Open ocean enclosure. The subway pack, which I don't think we're gonna need for a long time. Uh, it looks like we can do a wetland farm process or something with kelp over there, I think. <gasps> Whoa, exhibit control. Ooh, bacteria farm, what? What would I do with a bacteria farm? That sounds so cool. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, 
maybe open ocean enclosure for now. And then we can, oh my gosh, there's an aquarium archway. There's an aquarium archway that looks amazing. And then there is a scroll coral plant pack. See, that is going to be one of the things I'm going to try to put a lot of research into is to unlock all of the undersea plants that might go ahead and give our little fishies an extra little perk. Uh, and speaking of our fishies, Mega Ship is still trolling around for clownfish and I refuse to entertain them. Uh, and now we could go ahead and we could add more clownfish in. I mean, I guess? Sure. Like, they might eventually have some babies. I'm not gonna buy the females from the mega ship because they're they're definitely not friendly and good and on our side. Uh, but we'll have to see how that works out. And I'm gonna have to see how I can put all of these pieces together so that hopefully, oh look at the little wave sign board, that's adorable. <laughs> I guess I could go ahead and I could just like put it right here just to be like, yep, go this way guys. Like that's where you're gonna find all the cute little fishies. And there's the fountain hedges. Okay, this is a new thing. Is that a cute little fennec fox? And it, oh, they're trident lamps. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, the fishbone bench. Oh my gosh, I need to recreate this for zoo crafting because that is just too precious. Holy canoodles. Wow. We've got water, we have got staff entrances. Oh, attractions that we can go ahead and put down. Uh, sign boards. All right. All right, we're gonna have some fun, friends. I don't know. Ooh, a little fish snack vendor. That's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we'll put that over there too. I'm gonna need some bins at this point so that people don't start making like a huge mess everywhere. Oh my gosh, but there's a seal bin. Okay, that's really cute too. <laughs> oh, adorable. Well, friends, I'm going to poke around and see what I can see. And as we go ahead and unlock a little bit more and figure out how we can take good care of our fishies, well, we'll continue on because I absolutely want to see what we can crisscross, crisscross, crisper breed for all of our curious creations and our curious creatures. And I'm going to triple, double, triple, ultra, multi check that I can make a gorilla mermaid because I really want to. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.